KO. <laughs> Oh. Oh. All right, I get the same response when I enter the sauna. <laughs> it's Friday, so you know what that means. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He was the inspiration for the mute button. Host of One Nation and co-host of Fox and Friends, Brian Kilby. She would never use cocaine because it would only slow her down. Co-host of Outnumbered, Emily Campagno. He used to bang a gavel, now he makes libs unravel. Comedian Vince August. And I'd hate to be her neighbor when she finally goes into labor. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. All right, before we get to some news stories, let's do this. I like my new Greg's I Leftovers. Mmm. Uh, yeah, it's leftovers. Where I read the jokes we didn't use this week, and as always, it's my first time reading them. So if they suck, we'll make Joe Mackey shave James Carville's back. <laughs> right. So Tim Waltz is apparently launching a media blitz to woo male voters. He claims he won't leave a man behind. Unless it's in Iraq. Ooh. Yeah, you laughed a little early, didn't you? <laughs> Second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, called allegations about his personal behavior a distraction. And he added that every second he spends denying them is one less second he can have sex with a nanny. <laughs> On this day in 1975, Bill Clinton married Hillary Rodham in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Fayetteville? Mm. A hopeless romantic, he celebrates the anniversary like he did on the actual wedding day by nailing the maid of honor. <laughs> Bill will also hit the campaign trail for Kamala Harris next week. He says he's looking forward to getting out there to pound the pavement and some new ass. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Hillary's new book has apparently sold poorly in its first week. Funeral arrangements for the publisher will be released soon. <laughs> CBS's 60 Minutes was caught editing their interview with Kamala Harris to make her look better. It's a shocking ethical lapse. Mike Wallace must be rolling in his grave. Not over this, though but that his son is Chris Wallace. <laughs> that is so good. A Florida dad saved his home from Hurricane Milton by strapping it to the ground. They do the same thing with Doug Emhoff during nanny season. <laughs> There is a nanny season. The court ruling says Missouri sex offenders aren't required to post no candy signs on Halloween. But if they really want to keep kids away, post a sign that says, all I have is Necco wafers. <laughs> oh, you like Neckos? Whatever. Canadian speed eater set a world record by eating more than two pounds of sriracha hot sauce in under three minutes. Tomorrow, he plans on setting another record for world's hottest diarrhea. <laughs> Your diarrhea is hot. <laughs> the White House promoted Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre to senior advisor to the president. Her job duties include his duties. <laughs> 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 New research suggests 26% of those in a relationship hide their true number of sex partners from their partner. Makes sense. I never believed Kudlow when he said I was his first. <laughs> James Carville says he's scared to death about Election Day. Also terrifying to Carville? <laughs> being, t being turned into boots. <laughs> Thank you.
The University of Cambridge is recommending an unusual measure to fight climate change, slower planes. Don't we already have those? Yeah, they're called cars. All right. Golden Bachelor Jerry Turner made a surprise appearance on the Golden Bachelorette on Monday night. And when the new cast started applauding, the lights kept turning on and off. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Joy Behar turned 82 this week. I know. Which is 574 in dog years. <laughs> it's amazing. Good for her. Woof, woof. She has such a shiny coat. <laughs> All right. With 25 days until the election, it seems the GOP is overtaking the Dems. Don't take my word for it, even though I'm handsome and you should. But the Wall Street Journal reports that for the first time in more than 30 years, more Americans call themselves Republicans than Democrats. And that's one transition liberals don't support. Uh, the Journal, oh, you clap later. The Journal cites NBC polls showing Republicans leading Dems in party identification 42 to 40 percent. Compare that to 2020, when De Dems led by six points, and 2016, when they led by seven, and 2012, when they led by nine. You notice a pattern there? It's clear the percent of Americans who identify as Dems is receding faster than Brian Kilmeade's hairline. <laughs> Now I know why I was booked on the show. <laughs> All for one joke. You can go now. <laughs> Gallup found the same thing. More voters identifying as Republican than Democratic. It's not hard to see why. First, the Dems aren't dealing with real problems. Instead, they focus on hypothetical scares, like the ever-present threat to democracy. Meanwhile, Republican concerns are tangible. We know what crime, a migrant surge, and inflation looks and feels like. But what does a real threat to democracy look like? I bet Trump knows. That's the real threat to democracy, stupid people. That's the threat. <laughs> Our biggest threat to democracy is stupid people. So true. He's not wrong. <laughs> Stupid people look at crime and think, we need to get rid of laws. Then when crime explodes, they blame that on the price of bread. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hispanics, blacks, and young people are fleeing the Dems like a French hooker from a bar of soap. <laughs> because they're realizing there's nothing to be gained when you're viewed as a group. It just makes it easier for the ones doing the grouping to lie to you. Whether it's Russian collusion, the fine people hoax, crime, or the price of eggs going up. But also the Dems have endorsed the most reviled action ever, line cutting. And not the fun kind where I fake a neck injury <laughs> to board a plane early. The Dems, by embracing equity and identity politics under the guise of compassion, allows one group to cut in line. Whether it's jobs, resources, or relief because their past is apparently more important than your future. The Democrats have become a party that says your problems don't matter. Just ask Western North Carolina. You know, we often talk about people living in bubbles, and maybe it's true, but one bubble is sheltered and the other isn't. And if you're sheltered from real world problems, you can happily let scammers game the system because it's not affecting you whether it's BLM fraud, illegals acting as asylum seekers, or thugs masquerading as victims of systemic oppression. But you can't pull this with the working class. Here's a question. Where would you try cutting in line at? A book signing for Hillary Clinton or a Kid Rock concert? <laughs> Only one will leave you picking up your teeth. In every common concern, the Dems place their compassion on the wrong team. Vindictive activists and grifters gaming the system. They're more valued than parents concerned for their kids or citizens worried about putting food on the table. The rest of us have to live in the real world. Gangs, crimes, drugs. We don't need four more years. We need four more guns. The Dems put the perverse before their people. They put radicals before reality. 
Now, even their core constituents no longer want to be called bleeding hearts. Too often, that means you got stabbed by someone Democrats were gullible, gullible enough to help. Brian, yes. Thank you for coming on the show. You mean Before that? We all know right. you really have nowhere else to go. I have nowhere else to go. It's a Friday. What am I going to do? I know. You know? You just, you, just, just wait for Monday. Yeah, you just drive yeah, around Long Island. I do. What else would I do? <laughs> wait, wait for traffic to build up and then dissipate. Yeah. Right? And then I go home and wear the same outfit till Sunday night, then quickly change. Right. Thanks no, for it's like me. I don't even have to insult you anymore. You just do it yourself. That, I just, I like the boots <laughs> before. Right. But doesn't it, it, it seems like, and there are graphs that show this, that the Dems have moved more to the left than the Republicans have moved to the right. Like So, like, the left has gone way over here. The, the Republicans, in a weird way, and I don't know if the party realizes it, have not really moved because Trump was never really a hardcore conservative. He was always a centrist. So that's, I think the party has just, the, the, the Dems have left their party. There's certain things he's very conservative on and other things he isn't. He doesn't really care what the party thinks. He knows what he thinks. And the party thinks more like him now than they did in 2016. But the thing that's changed is, you're right, about the Democrats, it's bullying. Bullying on the vaccine, bullying on the mask, bullying on global warming, uh, bullying, on, uh, bullying on pronouns. Really? We got to change it. Oh, the country? The country sucks, too. It's built on the backs of slaves on stolen land. Really? I kind of like the flag. Oh, you don't like the flag? They don't like the flag because now it's a trigger mechanism. So when you cheer Donald Trump, they actually don't say Trump. They say USA. Think about that. By being pro-American, that's now a party now. And then most people are in the pro-American camp. We used to divide underneath it and decide taxes and foreign policy. But we all used to agree, great country. We're in first place every day. We just want to get better. Now, all of a sudden, you have a group of people going, we really suck. Let's find a way to make up for that. And it started with the apology tour. And I'll say this about the Democrats. I want to give Emily and you guys something to say, because I've said a lot <laughs> of valuable things. <laughs> Democrats used to be cool. They go through a period where JFK was cool, RFK was cool, uh, Bill Clinton with all his faux, uh, faux pas. He's kind of a cool guy, and Barack Obama's got positive qualities. You look at Joe Biden, look at Kamala Harris, you look at Chuck Schumer, you look at these people telling us how bad this country is and saying, you keep that side, you keep your celebrities. I really don't care what you have to say. If you want me to go now, because I've hit a height yeah. right now, I mean, I well, cannot I, see exceeding this. Level. I would be worried, Democrats, when Brian Kilmeade says, you're no longer cool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, the it's host of Fox and Friends. Right. See, these you got a show on Fox Nation. These, all right, thank you. Coaches for that. high school soccer. No, that's not true. <laughs> I, I coach club soccer, but not anymore. Oh, uh, not. Uh, I'm I looking guess, for a team. I'm sorry about that. Thank I you. saw that in the news. Yeah. Don't worry, they'll clear you of the charges. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, it seems like okay. I think when you're a Republican or a Libertarian, you always just don't trust politicians. I feel like the Democrats are suddenly coming to the realization that their side has been lying to them the whole time. Totally. And to your point, not only has the Democratic Party writ large moved to the far left, but what became their mouthpiece was the far, far, far left, the massive extremist. And somewhere along the line, they lost anyone that had an iota of common sense or relatability. I mean, what happened to the Kennedys, right? The, the, the generation above RFK Jr., that's the whole point. And now, you often talk about this, the, the, the ship of misfits, right? The pirate ship. Mm -hmm. That the Republican Party used to be sort of, you know, a, a hawkish and a fiscal conservative party. It was sort of met, met along these delineated lines that, you know, were, were pretty clear and, and very specific. And now, man, it's, it's common sense. And the, I think the common denominator is freedom. And it's an articulable way of freedom. It's freedom from the government. The encroachment by the government that the Democratic Party has embraced to the tune of massive unconstitutional censorship, hating America. I mean, if, if they had it up to themselves, there would be no America, frankly. Right. Being, it would, it, all of those freedoms being wiped out, the individual being wiped out, and we see it. We saw it from Barack Obama, who was cherished with hope. Well, now he says, you're a sexist if you don't vote for I Kamala know. Harris. Yeah. And remember, Biden said you're not black if you don't vote for Biden. I mean, the, the list goes on of the box that they shove Americans into when they were supposed to be all about joy and hope. They are about nothing other than stamping out any type of individual thinking so that they can tell you how to vote and where to vote. But they're going to get a surprise in November. That being said, we cannot be complacent and we cannot be overconfident mm. because they have cheating on their side.
Well, there is a. We were talking about this. Thing. I watched Jesse Waters crumble in humiliation under his claims of a red wave. So I don't want to repeat the same mistakes of that idiot. <laughs> Do you see a blue wall or a red wave? Or what, what's your gut telling you? I don't, and I, I disagree with you at one point. I do think the Republicans have changed mm -hmm. because the Republicans that I remember from, you know, 91 were very pro-war. Yeah. Now you yeah. don't see that as much. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the Republicans... See, I, I think the problem is not so much that people left the Democratic Party as much as the Democrats expel members because if you don't agree with everything, yes. you don't have a home with us. Whereas I hear Republicans that... We'll say, look, they, yes, I get it. There's things about Trump I don't like. Or even on the gun control. You know what? Yeah, I do believe in red flag laws. You know, you can go down the list, whereas with the Democratic Party, it seems like if you're all in on LGBTQIA+, but you know what? Can we talk about this transition? No. No. Yeah. You, you either tow the company line or you're out. So I don't think it's so much that people left the party as much as they've been expelled from the party. Mm -hmm. They're kind of homeless. And you know what? It's, hey, look, if you don't want me, fine. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll go here if they're more accepting of me, which is the flip of what it's been, because that's it's not what that was when I was growing up in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, like the Republicans are the party of the homeless and the Democrats are the party of the Homeless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See what I did there? A little hand wave changed right. the whole meaning of the yeah. word. Yeah. Physical comedy. Physical comedy. <laughs> I've read about that. <laughs> it just comes natural to me, I guess. <laughs> what do you think about the contrast between the Democrats representing the party of these intangible, hypothetical threats and everybody else kind of concerned with reality? Well, I think part of it is... Um, you know, if you look at the media, the media is based in New York City. Mm -hmm. And in New York City, there really aren't Republicans. There are, there are Republicans, but there yeah. aren't people <laughs> who will straight up say, yeah. like, I'm a Republican. And then right. movies are all based in L.A., same exact thing there. And I think that when you wind up in these bubbles, you're, it's easy to think that there's people who would be embarrassed to be Republicans. Mm -hmm. And that's what been one of the greatest things about me going on tours. I'm going to these different places. I'm in Wisconsin this weekend. Appleton sold out, but tickets to Milwaukee are still available. If you want to go to therealcattiff.com. But no. That was subtle. If you get to, no, but, being, but in, in all seriousness, yeah. there's people here who would be shocked going to places and talking to people who's, who's it's, it's not a dirty word. It's not, but if you turn on the TV, it's, People in New York and in L.A., they think that's the only place in the world, and they kind of look down on other places. Mm -hmm. They don't actually know and get to talk to people in these other places. Nobody who's actually been in these places would be surprised to see that a lot of people identify as Republicans. Yeah, in fact— In New York, you can identify as literally anything else. I do notice, too, that, that it's creeping into New York. I, you are seeing people unafraid of wearing a red hat, Yeah, you know? I have not seen that. I have. Yeah. I have. Hey, maybe in the, the building. Yeah. <laughs> Trump's going to sell out MSG. He's going to yeah. be at Madison yes. Square Garden next week. Yes. Mm. So Sorry, that was really That's cool. New York. Well, yeah. thank you for that extra piece of information. Does he ever <laughs> shut up? <laughs> <laughs> We're killing Trying to help the show. You know what? If that's hell, please, God, stop. <laughs> you crack yourself up. I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like I've turned you into Dwight Schrute. I, I'm, you not know? Sure. I'm not sure. I know. <laughs> oh, the right. office? We got to go. Up next, Libs Love Clips of Weirdos Eating Chip. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.